Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is talking about getting Windows applications to work in Linux. One of the biggest difficulties people face when switching over from Linux to Windows is the fact that there is going to be a lot of Windows applications that just do not work. Now, some of the software that we're going to be covering today gives you the option or the availability to get some Windows applications running. Now, I will note with all of this that it's better to find free and open source alternatives that are just natively available on Linux. But for some things that's not possible and some of these tools might be helpful to you. And in addition to that, I'm going to note that if you're using like big creative applications, Adobe Creative Suite, uh, even Microsoft desktop applications, or even professional applications like uh, ArcGIS Pro. These are probably not going to work very well, even with wine libraries or any other hacks or trickery that we can perform. And if you're trying to switch over to Linux from Windows, but you need to bring something over with you like ArcGIS or Adobe Premiere Pro, you're either going to want to have another Windows partition on your computer or have a system powerful enough that you can run virtualization. VMware runs pretty good on Linux, so you could go ahead and give that a shot if you would like to. And we'll talk about more of general compatibility and stuff a little bit later. But with that, there are gonna be a lot of different games and programs that can use the Wine compatibility layer to get up and running on Linux. This will basically convert all the Windows libraries and system calls over to open source alternatives. This is what Steam's Proton is built off of and is what allows many Windows games to function on Linux and have Steam Deck compatibility. The main problem with that is Wine is a huge pain to set up and configure, but luckily there are some programs that can help out with that. But a problem with those is they all kind of suck for one reason or another. I'm going to quickly run through these tools and the very last one we're going to cover is probably going to be your best bet. But first, we must thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. If you're looking for a way to host Linux servers in the cloud or you don't have the means to get your own hardware, Linode is a fantastic option for you. You have a wide variety of Linux distributions to choose from a whole bunch of one-click web app installers, including WordPress, Minecraft Server, Ghost, Nextcloud, and many more. They feature a huge library of guides and tutorials and 24 seven customer support to get you up and running. And better yet, if you use the link down below, you can get a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and try out Linode today. The oldest solution to this is called Wine Tricks. It's a simple wine system config tool built around Zenity, which if you don't know is a tool for generating dialogues from a bash script. Because of this, the UI is just that, a bunch of dialogues that connect scripts to configure Wine. This is a really hacky experience to me and just not a good user experience. Play on Linux is another popular tool for running Windows games on Linux, but the version that everybody actually uses hasn't been maintained for a long time and has a ton of graphical bugs and glitches making it very hard to use. Just try opening it up on any dark theme. It does have a newer version with a full redesign and it promotes the flat pack of it on its GitHub repo that is relatively active, but this flat pack is two years out of date and riddled with bugs. Q4 Wine is another popular tool for the job, but again, it has a confusing user interface in my opinion that I really don't want to spend the time trying to figure out. And anyways, the lead developer is Ukrainian. So for now, development has halted because of the ongoing conflict in that region. Crossover is a, another solution, and it even has loads of patches and fixes for certain applications, making many of them really easy to install. And it just has a clean user interface overall. In addition, they have a database similar to ProtonDB with all the applications they support with ratings. However, Crossover is a paid application, which costs about $60 a year for updates and $500 for a lifetime license. Now, this does support the work of Wine and Proton, so it's not just some company benefiting from the work of those projects. And if you're interested in learning more about Crossover, the Linux experiment has a pretty good video going over this. 
detailing his experiences, the pros and cons of using it. Finally, you can get a huge variety of your games working on Linux thanks to Steam and Lutris. This application is very popular and makes it easy to run games by leveraging and combining existing emulators. Free implementation of various compatibility layers and it gives you a central interface to launch all of your games. The client can connect with pre-existing services such as Humble Bundle, GOG, and Steam to make your game libraries easily available. So from here we're going to go ahead and talk about my current favorite solution and that is going to be Bottles. I have it installed here through the Flatpak and when you first launch it it's going to give you a welcome screen with a little bit of information and then offer to make your first bottle. Right here I have it open live on my desktop and what we're going to be doing is checking out this application. Now first of all the UI is beautiful, it's very simple and elegant, it is a GNOME application so it matches the GTK styling and all that, it's absolutely beautiful. And this isn't necessarily a specific feature to bottles but combined with the nice UI and the fact that each bottle is actually an independent container with wine. When we go ahead and create our very first bottle, what it's going to do is create an isolated instance of wine, which is helpful because if you have separate applications that need different wine dependencies or whatever, it can all be separated and it won't have interference like that. So for example, I'm going to create a new bottle and let's say I want the uh, GOG launcher. That is something that we're going to actually install with the script and later on we're going to use an exe executable file. So I'm just going to call this GOG launcher for now. Keep it under gaming. I'm going to go ahead and create that. And then it's going to go ahead, generate the configuration and run through the setup process of this. And you can see it's installing various dependencies such as Microsoft fonts, various DLLs, whatever it needs. And we're finalizing and it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So now this right here is my bottle. You can see the category here. This right here gives me the option to directly run a executable file in this bottle. But for now, I'm going to continue and see some of the other options we have. We have the option to run an executable again right here, but we have some other tools down here, such as the command line, registry editor, and other legacy tools. For example, if I'm to open up the registry editor, it's going to open up an actual Windows registry editor for this isolated instance. Granted, the uh, theming and all that looks like it's from like Windows 98, but what we're worried about is functionality. And like if I open the command line, for example, you can see this is in C Windows System 32 CMD EXE, and I have this functionality here. And if we go through here, we have a ton of different options, preferences, and things that we could do to enhance or customize our experience in this specific model. So we have various DirectX control, FSR discrete GPU. Under settings, we can set custom Windows versions to increase compatibility. For example, if you're using something a little bit older, you might want to switch this to kind of trick the software into what it's actually running. And we have our dependencies here. So this is everything that we have additionally optional to us. If you're trying to get an application that needs something, programs is empty because we haven't installed anything as is versions. Installers, we're gonna be using one of these, but before that we also have the uh, task manager and there's nothing really going on yet. So we're gonna jump over to installers and use one of these. Now these are curated by our community. Uh, so it makes just installing these specific things easier. I do wish they had more. Most of these are just various game launchers, but they do have a couple other things such as FL Studio here. If that's an application you need, it's gold rated. And then here we have the uh, GOG launcher, Origin, Steam, Ubisoft Connect, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one right here. So I'm just gonna click on this and we can see GOG Galaxy V1. Let's go ahead and start our installation and it's gonna run through and grab everything that it needs for us, including the various Windows dependencies and the actual installation files. And during the installation, I'm getting a little prompt here. We're gonna go English and then run through the actual uh, Windows setup here. Always make sure you read your licenses, go next. Here it's gonna drop into our program files. So that is good for me, let's proceed. And now we could go ahead and launch it. So I'm gonna hit finish and here we go. It was having some issues. It looks like it's still trying to install. It's up here. So I'm gonna exit out of the application and see if this finishes up, which it did. Cool. So show programs, I'm gonna try to relaunch that. So I'm gonna hit play and here it is. So let's see if it lets me log in. All right, we're in, beautiful. All right, so I went ahead, purchased the uh, favorite game I used to play back when I was a youngster. Uh, Empire Earth 2 Gold Edition. I remember I originally bought this game off of a shelf in a Fred Meyer. So let, let's see if it'll install here. All right, so let's go ahead and click install and hope for the absolute best. It's an older game, so it shouldn't take too long. It's probably like, I think it was like two CDs or something. 
to get it up and going. That's so close. I, I really hope this works. It's always a hit or miss. And if you do want a, a free and open source alternative to this, uh, zero AD is awesome. Uh, go in your applications and your store and list by alphabetical. It'll be one of the first ones. Oh, 100%. All right, the mode of truth. Empire Earth 2 Gold Edition. Game installed. Let's see. Let's give it a play. Obviously, I didn't test this before recording. Oh, what's this? Oh, no. No. Ah! I'll try that again. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. Installed. Can I make it not manual? We'll just hit play. We'll go for it. Oh! <laughs> I just need to restart it. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. Runs great on. <laughs> the campaign in this game is actually pretty cool. You play like through history of various battles and whatnot. Let's just skirmish, add a couple. I just want to see if this works. Let's launch. Oh, that was the quickest loading screen I've ever. Been... <laughs> oh, we're in. It's looking good too. Look, we can select our people, have them go over there. Have these people get some wood, make some more people. Absolutely beautiful. Ooh. Okay, so max is 1080p. High, 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 high extreme, except nice. That's so cool. I'm so happy that worked. And that's just one example of their installer getting an old Windows game to work. And now what I'm gonna do is show you guys me just installing an EXE. So let's go back and we're gonna make a completely new bottle. So let's go over here. And this is going to be an application and I'm going to install the one application that most people use as an example. It's really the only application I can think of that I kind of wish was just on Linux for anything I need to use other than like uh, ArcGIS Pro. There's usually a uh, Linux alternative out there. Notepad plus plus. Ooh, happy users edition. <laughs> what unhappy user edition. Okay, download. All right, so close that out and we should be able to, obviously we could click this, but I'm gonna go in here. If I go down, you have some additional options or you can launch in terminal, but I'm just gonna run an executable. I technically could have done this in the same bottle that we were just working in because it's a small application. It probably doesn't have any dependency issues, but to be really certain, you can have everything separated like this. So I'm gonna go to downloads and I downloaded an exe. So right there, let's run it. And here we are the installer. So let's go, okay, next. Again, agree. Beautiful thing is this is a GNU license. So let's go ahead and agree to that. Next, next, install. There we go, and let's just run it right away. Here we are in Notepad++. Absolutely beautiful. One thing I will note is if we go to open, for example, you can see kind of how our directory is laid out. Right here we do have a Linux directory, but this isn't our actual directory. So if I go home, Brandon, there's nothing there. If I go my computer, I have C and Z. Z is that Linux directory and C is our Windows directory. And then here you can see program files, users, Windows, etc. I'm gonna cancel out of there, close that. That's installing a program basically. And there's some other tools that we didn't dive into. We have legacy tools here, so you can jump into Explorer, for example, kind of what we were in with that open dialogue. We have wine configuration, so you could jump in here and actually see the raw wine config if you'd like to. Control panel is kind of cool. For Wine specifically, it gives you some more options such as game controllers, etc. And you can just go ahead and explore the app. And if you do have issues with some applications, Google that application with this and you might be able to find these settings that you need to get whatever it is up and running. Such as here under system, we have uh, bottles runtime, steam runtime, game mode, working directory so we can change the default paths. Right here under manage drives, we could kind of change some of the stuff that we were looking at. Delete drives, copy drives, remove drives, whatever you need to do. And here, this is kind of cool. Under development and debugging, we have options for a mango HUD, Vulcan capture, and a couple other things. Additionally, something that's kind of cool is we could actually go up here and export specific configurations. So if we got something working flawlessly, you could go ahead and share these with other people. You have duplicate browse files, full backups, and of course we could go ahead and delete our bottles. So now all I have left is the GOG launcher here, which I will actually continue using. So this does work great. If you're just trying to get a couple games up and running, Lutris is almost more geared towards that. And if the game is on Steam, of course, try Steam and Proton first but this is just a great utility to go ahead and get these various things spun up pretty easily. So with that, I do hope you have a beautiful day. I will of course be linking to everything I mentioned down below so you can check it all out 
and figure out if there is a best option for you based on what you're trying to do. Again, this is not an end all be all solution as there are plenty of Windows programs that are just not going to cooperate with Wine at all, but the extra little compatibility is nice. And if you're looking for a virtualization to completely virtualize Windows to get something that's just not gonna work on Linux, I do have a separate VMware video. And honestly, in my opinion, that's probably one of the best options because you get a uh, full access, well not full, you get much greater access to uh, virtual graphic memory as compared to some of the other virtualization solutions. So again, with all that, have a beautiful day and good.